So, another important non-timber forest product. Any guesses? <laughs> Bushmeat. <laughs> so, Bushmeat can also be an important ecosystem services and um, I mean, it's a source of food, but in, com in some cases it's also used for medicine. So, in general, the definition of bushmeat excludes fish, mollusks, and uh, crustaceans. So, not the kind of things we find in the water. So, uh, why is it important bushmeat? So, the first one is, uh, of course, as a source of protein and nutrients for food security. And um, I want to make the point that in, in some areas it's the only source of iron and fat. So it's not just important in terms of having enough to eat, but having enough nutrients to be healthy. And uh, again, when there's times of drought or conflict, people turn to the forest. So bushmeat becomes an important resource when our crops fail or when there's a conflict. So it's also used as a source of income. So it's, it's sold and it provides money to pay school fees, to maybe buy medicine or for other purposes. And uh, an important point is that, um, I mean, I just want to make you think a little bit. So if you work in a rainforest zone where there's sets a fly, it's hard to grow cattle and other animals. So actually bushmeat might be the easiest source of protein that you may have. And uh, one of the problems in the rainforest zone is that the um, ecosystem is less productive. So if we just think about the elephants, eh? how many elephants can you get in a savanna? Well, they still eat a lot, eh? but you can have more than in a forest just because the grass grows faster. So it kind of maintains a bigger population of elephants. And elephants live in groups in savannas, they live alone in the rainforest because of the same thing, because it's not enough food, so they need to separate. So the same would go for other animals. So wildlife is less abundant, surprisingly, in the rainforest compared with the savannas. And uh, our colleague from the drylands will say, either you forgot the drylands, okay, in the drylands it's also even less frequent because of course there's less biomass to sustain large numbers of wildlife. So if we find elephants in northern Kenya, they're really, really scattered because they need the huge surface to have enough food. So um, an important point is thinking about overhunting. So overhunting, when we take too many of these animals, can have different effects. It's not just that the species disappears, eh? so maybe our threatened species disappears, the tourists no longer come to see type A monkey. I want you to think about what we call the cascading effects. So one thing happens, another happens, another happens, another happens. And I think it's interesting to think about two levels. One of them is about other species. So for example, there's monkey A, type of species of uh, primate, that um, lives in big groups and eats certain type of fruits. It's very big, very noisy, maybe more aggressive. So monkey B is kind of in small numbers because it competes with monkey A. Now monkey A, more aggressive, more loud, big numbers, maybe it's overhunted first. So now because this monkey A disappeared and there's still these fruits in the forest and so on, monkey B population becomes bigger. So sometimes when we over one species gets overhunted, some others become more abundant, surprisingly. I mean, usually monkey B would also eventually get overhunted and it would have another effect. Eh? And uh, when we talk uh, about the effects of wildlife in forest, is that what are the effects of overhunting on vegetation? Because you know, these large animals, eh, like, of course we know elephants, but even monkeys and some rodents, they disperse the seeds. So when they disappear, and also as they digest, for example, for the baobab, when they uh, digest the seeds, the coat of the seed is very thick, so it needs to go through the digestive system to be able to get enough water and germinate. So the same goes for some other seeds. So when the animals become rare, <laughs> maybe some of the trees will eventually become rare. And I just want to hit the point here because um, there's a really nice paper that came out recently about defaunation in the Amazon. 
So one of the ideas that is out there, or one of the theories that scientists have, is that in the Amazon, there are few big trees. As I showed you yesterday, there's less carbon per hectare, you remember? Because the trees are smaller in general. Because the very big trees tend to be dispersed by big animals. And the big animals of the Amazon were overhunted a long time ago. So the idea is that these big trees had already disappeared. So it's just one, uh, it's a really cool paper. If somebody wants, I can send it along. So it's good to think about the cascading effects of overhunting in the ecosystem. But of course, if we go back to the communities, it's also bad for the communities, eh? Because now they'll have less food and maybe less money because they cannot sell the, the meat. So one of the biggest problems with bushmeat is at two levels. More people, more demand for protein. In some areas, more demand for bushmeat. The other problem is that as people get wealthier, so we want to think that slowly, eh? even in the remote areas of Africa, we're getting a little bit wealthier. So as we are getting a little bit wealthier, we want to eat more meat. So th not only there's more people, but people as they are slightly wealthier, they want to eat more meat. And another problem is the fact that some of these areas are becoming more accessible. So now it's easier to sell it. So there was a paper published last year showing that for protected areas in Central Africa, the biggest threat was overhunting for bushmeat. So it is a big problem, eh? But I would want to say it can also be, uh, it's also an opportunity. So this is a study done next door in Kawuzi Viega National Park and Itombe Nature Reserve in DR Congo. And what they showed that part of the problem was mining. So we have this big mining in the area, gold, coltan, and some other minerals. And these guys spend the whole day in the mine, eh? and they get paid quite a lot of money. So now they want to eat meat. They no longer want to eat just rice and beans or fufu there and beans. Now they have money. They want to eat meat. But they said, say fly. So nobody's growing cows there. So where the meat comes from? From the forest. So it's a, a problem in the area, as you can imagine. And uh, it was very interesting because <laughs> actually 99% of the respondents said, yeah, I eat meat, I eat bush meat. <laughs> yeah. And then they said, oh yeah, if there's other meat, I would buy it. And I would, we can argue if it's true or not, eh? but the fact that there's no alternative is already a point. Eh? There's no other thing to eat in, pro in terms of protein, animal protein. So um, in terms of the species that are eaten, in general, people prefer to eat mammals. So this study uh, showed that most of the species uh, hunted and traded for bushmeat are mammals. I think ABC is different parts of Africa, if I remember correctly. Yeah? So you can see most people prefer to eat mammals, fewer birds, less reptiles, and very, very few amphibians. And amongst the mammals, more the more abundant were antelopes, dikers, so dikers are the, um, in French, is a cephalof. So it's the ones found in the forest. Then rodents and primates. And uh, as we traditionally, people used to hunt with traps, either metal or made with uh, ropes. As people get more money as well, they start to hunt more with guns. Any idea what is the difference? What are the effects or what might be the effects of using guns instead of traps? when hunting. Efficiency increases. Good point. Now we can hunt a lot more. Eh? Mm. What else? The noise. Sorry? The noise. No, yes. The noise. Well, yeah, you can also detect it easily. Good point. What else? Do you hunt the same species with guns and traps? No. no. That's another difference. With a trap, especially for example for monkeys that go with groups, if you put a trap and you're a very lucky hunter, you might get one. But if you go to the forest and see a group of monkeys and you have a gun, you can hunt them down, all of them. So what gets hunted changes when you have access to firearms and the numbers also change. So it's important to think about that. So in some parts of Africa where guns are more easily accessible, there's been a shift on the species that have been hunted. Also, bigger animals are easier to hunt with a gun, eh? not just monkeys. I mean, if you think about some of the bigger antelopes, you know, it's easier to hunt with a gun than to put a trap. 
So just to remember that um, some very, uh, let's call it flagship species, you know, very famous animals are still hunted for bushmeat, including gorillas, chimpanzees and bonobos. And also that some of the animals are not just hunted for the meat, are also hunted for the skin, for example, crocodile, for medicine, especially tortoises, ivory, as you know, is a big issue, or for pet trade. And actually, in Madagascar, for example, the biggest issue is the pet trade. They have a lot of endemic frogs that can fetch really high price in the international illegal market, but it exists. So frogs are being this and it's when you think about, um, I mean, uh, what is the issue around bushmeat? I mostly talk about food, but you need to remember that in some areas, maybe the illegal trade of uh, pet animals is a bigger issue. Any idea? Oh, no. Museum? Museum? <laughs> no, trophy. This is not the rich man house, eh? <laughs> it's taken in Benin, eh? Traditional <laughs> Traditional healers, yes, medicine. Medicine and magical rituals. So it's just to remind you, eh? And how many endangered species can you spot in the picture? Crocodile. The big bone is an elephant. More crocodile here. Head of a chimpanzee. So that's the thing that, I mean, I'm going to talk more about food, but remember that some of these species fetch high values when traded for medicine and for rituals. <laughs> no, it's life, eh? Let's acknowledge it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know there, eh, this is no joke, eh? when people do politics, eh, they go and visit these guys and they have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a cool study, Pre uh, nearly 8,000 households in different countries in Africa. And uh, they, they showed that hunting is mostly done for subsistence in forest habitats, so if you live in the forest, it's hard to grow cows or goats, you mostly go and eat meat. But actually, it's a, a good source of income where you have few alternatives. And uh, you can try to spot your country on the map. The darker, the more important the bush meat. So, surprisingly, DRC didn't come as high as I thought, but we can see that our friend from Ghana might be surprised. <laughs> so, so they also found in this study that bushmeat increases uh, near areas of high population density. So we go back to the same thing. People in the city that have the money to afford the tasty or fancy bushmeat, they might be willing to buy. So then people are willing to hunt it to get money for it. And uh, bushmeat is also higher in places where there's low governance, where there's more corruption. I mean, top Nigeria as you can see in the figure. So it's a big source of cash. I always say, eh, where people have money, everything has a price. So, so why people eat uh, bushmeat? It's sometimes the only source of food or protein. Sometimes it's the cheapest. In some places it's believed to have magical purposes or medicinal purposes. And in some cities, it shows that you are rich. You can afford it. So if you are, can afford a certain type of bushmeat, it means you are among the elite. And this is a big problem in some areas. And also because of taste. Sometimes people prefer to eat bushmeat. It just tastes better. And then, but it's also interesting to note that in some societies, they don't eat bushmeat. I, I mean, I was working in Northern Kenya and I thought it was very interesting for them, as our colleague can confirm. For them, eating birds is no food. No, 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 Jesus. No, no, no. Even fish, eh? Mm. When they saw me eating fish, it's like, oh my God, this is so smelly. Yeah. It's so disgusting. Mm -hmm. So we need to remember that food is also cultural. Mm -hmm. So as me, I don't like eating caterpillars. In other areas, it's a delicacy. Mm. Yeah. 
I like eating fish, but the guys there didn't like it. <laughs> so this is another survey in, a, in four countries in West Africa. And what they did, they did a, they surveyed urban and rural people in different ages. And uh, they showed that uh, age, but not a, so age had an effect on bushmeat consumption. So younger people kind of prefer to eat pizza or hamburger or something more if they had the money rather than bushmeat. So, and also they prefer to eat antelopes uh, rather than snakes, for example. So it's cultural as well. So as we did for medicinal plants, uh, okay, I think it's good to acknowledge that this is an important ecosystem services in, in some place. So how can we assess if this is sustainable? So we can analyze what is taken, what the hunters are actually taken from our study area. We can also analyze what is being traded, what is out there in the markets, in the restaurants, or maybe at the checkpoints in the roads. We can also analyze consumption patterns. We can go to the households and ask, oh, how often do you eat bushmeat? Which type? Is it expensive? Why do you prefer bushmeat over fish? And uh, of course, um, it's very important to link what we found in the market or in the household surveys or what the hunter said, with what is really the data that is out there. What is the population, the density of these animals in the wild? So the first example is a study done with hunters in Gabon. This is a national park, Ivingo National Park. And uh, they realized that hunting increased in the dry season during their circumcision ceremonies. Mm -hmm. So when there was the circumcision, instead of calling, uh, killing a, I don't know, a cow as a ceremony, these people, they preferred to turn to certain species of bushmeat. They also realized that secondary forests supply about 20% of the bushmeat. So the animals move, eh? That's a good thing about animals or bad, depending. But at least they might prefer the primary forest, but might believe to the secondary forest. So it can also be a resource for secondary forest bushmeat. And the greatest valued species was the Red River Hawk, which is kind of the wild pig. And the most hunted were the blue dike and the monkeys. But here, there's no big city nearby, so actually it was mostly at the local level, at the local market. So the number was not that big. Um, this study was really cool because what they tried to do, they actually also looked at the biology of these species and the density in the forest using camera traps and some other surveys. And they came up with the idea that you could potentially harvest sustainably some of these animals. So you have fewer people, it's mostly for subsistence, you have a large forest, hey, let them hunt it. So. I think it's a pretty cool idea because people tend to think, oh no, bushmeat is horrible, we should protect it. Well, if you live in the rainforest and it's really hard to grow other sources of protein, maybe we can make a trade-off, you know? Maybe some of these dikers, some of these small animals, especially the rodents, they reproduce pretty fast, so maybe this is a resource for them. I mean, a really nice survey also, uh, the problem is really hard to study hunters. You need to build the trust, you need to be very fit to go up and down the forest at night. So it's not an easy survey to replicate, but very, very interesting. Second study comes from Cameroon, the Java bio bio Biosphere Reserve in southern Cameroon. And uh, this one is a really nice study because they survey uh, uh, hunters twice, 13 years apart. So there was a survey done at some point in time, and then later on they went and asked again. And, um, they saw that they mostly hunt uh, ungwates, a little bit of rodents and primates. So just by knowing the species, as I say, it's hard to hunt primates with traps. My guess would be that they're still mostly using traps, not guns. Then the most hunted was the porcupine and the blue and Peter Zyker. And interestingly, they didn't find a change in species most hunted over time, which in a way might suggest that the level of hunting and the choice of hunting of species was uh, sustainable, but they actually report that there had been a shift. Fewer people were using traps and more people were using firearms. So maybe if they repeat the study 13 years in time, I mean 10 years in time again, it might change because with firearms it's easier to hunt, as I said, for example, the monkeys. Now we move to another type of approach to study bushmeat. 
Now we talk about what people are trading in cities and what are the prices. So this is a study done in Kisangani in the Air Congo. There's been a few, uh, this group, Bangliet, they've done quite a few studies and they're really interesting. I'm going to show this one that they also did a survey, this time in the market, just checking what people are selling in the market, seven years apart. And they actually found that fewer monkeys were there in uh, 2009 compared with 2002. Most likely because people were already using firearms there, eh? so it was not a problem of having enough guns to go around. Most likely because they had been overhunted. And uh, the prices uh, and the origin of the animals also changed over time. So you can see here how the, the first survey, there were a lot of monkeys in the market, and in the second survey there were rarely any. The other species didn't change that much. So, um, interesting, there was an increase in, um, you see, in fruit bats as well. So, by looking at what's there in the market, it's a bit like monitoring the trees in the forest that I told you, eh? But in this time, we go see what's going on in the market, and a few years later, we get a student, usually the first time you go yourself, eh? maybe for your PhD or your master's, <laughs> and then you have a friend, a colleague, or a student goes five years later, ten years later, to see how it changed. So it just as another idea of time of uh, research that we can do or, or um, monitoring. Eh? This is a study also from Kisangani. They interviewed 600 school children. You know the good thing about children eh, is that they're very bad at telling lies. So you can really get to see, you know what are they eating in their houses. So in this case, they compared 300 children in cities, in the city itself, and 300 around the villages. And they found that both urban and rural people, uh, sorry, children eat bushmeat, but um, for different reasons. So the poorer ha households ate less bushmeat and it was cheaper, and the urban children ate the bigger animals. And this is something that is actually quite common. So if you are a hunter in a small village and you hunt a small rodent, you might eat it at home. But if you are lucky to hunt something big, you would go and trade it to the city because generally larger animals get the bigger price in the city. So you cannot consume the small ones in the house and sell the big ones for the city or for the other urban areas. So in both um, dikers, which is this kind of small um, cephalov that you find, were the most um, consumed and the urban ate more of the wild pig, while the rural com consume more of the smaller animals, as I said. <laughs> Even crocodile is there, eh? you see? Yes? Uh, is it a single species of monkeys or uh, are there several species? Where, where is it? The monkeys, Small monkeys. I think some of the problem is that some of the monkeys, they... Um, so in this area, the roads are really bad. So to transport the meat, it gets smoked. They smoke it, they dry it and smoke it. And then for the, some of the small monkeys, it's really hard to tell the species apart when it's already smoked. So I think in this study, they group them. So a small monkey should be, I think, like two or three different species, but it's really hard when it's a smoke to tell them apart. That's why they group them in the survey. But it's a good point because maybe over time, I mean, especially in the other survey and changes over time, if we cannot separate it to species level, it's hard also to see if it changed that. Eh? Good observation. You can know which species is mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything interesting about the animals that we see in the panel? I see two, three, at least three endangered species. Sorry. I don't know, maybe the ones in the back cannot read eh? Let me read for you. The first one says diker, porcupine, small monkeys, Poach, African poached rat, red river hawk, crocodile, grass cutter, small pangolin, okapi, elephant, water chevrotin, and buffalo. Even the Europeans eh, will know that a few are in danger. So elephant, for food, eh, this is not ivory. Small pangolin, all the pangolins are also endangered species. In the city years, it's illegal to trade them. We can still see it in the market. Okapi. Do you know what is okapi? Yes. No. 
I think it's the most beautiful animal on earth, let me tell you. It's this funny animal that looks between a zebra and a giraffe and it's just found in the forest. You know, it's only found in this patch of Congo in the whole world. And people are eating it. Sorry, uh, just curious. You said daikas were the most consumed species. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. I'm sure there must be a reason why daikas were the most consumed species. Mm? They taste better. Yeah, or is it, are no. they available? But they taste better and they're easier to hunt. What else? How about the forest hogs? Because, you know, for those who know what it means by kitimoto, mm -hmm. the, the meat should be even more sweeter than the daikas. The, the so I was just curious. Yeah, know. yeah, I think it depends on the area. I it's mean, area, okay. I mean, you also need to see the diker. It's different species. Eh? So maybe when you group them, it seems that it's bigger eh? because it's, it goes back to the same point. We group different species. But maybe here they prefer dikers. That would be my personal experience in DRC, people prefer dica okay, than the hogs. Maybe what if we, maybe the species is better, uh, better Very abundant mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. area? Could it be also one of the factors? Mm -hmm. yeah. Otherwise, you can't consume something which is not there. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah.